Hello everyone, my name is Tina Mathur and I am an assistant professor in Biani Girls College. Today I will going to deliver a lecture on the topic working capital requirements and today we will going to discuss net current assets forecasting method. So, uh, in the last class uh, we have discussed about the operating cycle method. In this class we will discuss about forecasting net current assets methods. So, forecasting net current asset methods, it is the method of estimating working capital requirement on the basis of estimation of current assets which are to be required. So, uh, this is <laughs> calculated uh, first we have to estimate the current assets, forecasted current assets. So, we have to take uh, various uh, stock, first we have to start with the stock of raw material and we have to include the months or days or weeks which means that uh, on the basis of operating cycle, the stages or days involved in the operating cycle we take in this method. So, we take stock of raw material, then after that we take work in progress which includes raw material, uh, overhead and your direct labor that is wages and the duration uh, or the conversion period. And then we take finished goods, so under work in progress uh, when we take stock of raw material, we take 100 percent of cost of raw material because uh, on the basis of assumption that uh, all the material is fed or introduced in the beginning of the process and in case of direct labor or overhead, we take 50 percent of the cost of, raw, uh, cost of uh, direct labor and overhead on the basis of assumption that uh, direct labor and overhead are accrue evenly or they have spread evenly throughout the process. Then after that we take finished goods, stock of finished goods and its duration period, storage period, the sales period, then we take raw material under this, we take direct labor and overhead and uh, after this we take receivable or debtors which includes raw material, direct labor and overhead. The months or weeks or days that we can take uh, on the basis of the debtors collection period. And next is payment in advance that is a part of current assets. If anything, if any payment that we have paid in advance we include under this then we take estimated cash balance that is for a day to day requirements. So, we include that also under forecasting of current assets. After estimation of current assets, then we uh, come to current liability which are our short term liabilities. So, under this first we take creditors, the creditors uh, payment period for uh, duration of raw material. Now, after estimation or forecasting of current assets, we come to current liabilities. So, we come to the estimation of creditors means how much time it takes to payment for the creditors. So, we keep uh, the duration here and then uh, we take outstanding expenses which can be related to wages, can be related to administration or manufacturing expenses because they are also our liabilities, current liabilities. Then we uh, find out net working capital that is current assets minus current liabilities. What we have estimated that a forecasted current asset and forecasting current liabilities. So, when we uh, subtract current liabilities from the current assets, we get the net working capital and then we uh, keep some provision, we add some uh, contingency or provisions for future uncertainties and that in the end we get total working capital requirement. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Please like, comment, share and don't forget to subscribe your YouTube channel and visit our website grukpo.com. Thank you.